Hello everyone, I hope you're all well. I just thought I'd pop by and create another video. First of all, I hope you've all had a lovely Christmas and Happy New Year. I hope you have a wonderful new year and here's to a wonderful 2022 for everybody. Let's hope that it's one to remember and in a good way as well. So I hope you're all well uh, and I hope you've all had a fantastic festive season. Now, when I've had a couple of days off, uh, I've only literally had a couple of days off from creating. Sometimes, even when I have a small break, I'm a little bit lost on what to do first or where to get started or what colours to use. It's always the same and it's always the same after Christmas. When I've had my Christmas day and Boxing Day, and I've not done any creating for a couple of days. I, I, I like sort of, it's like I lose my flow. Um, so what I always try to do is I always try to create something simple. So that's the idea for today's video is that we create something that's nice and simple, that isn't too complicated and that we can all follow nice and easily. So what I've got first is I've got a piece of four and a half inch by six and a half inch piece of white smooth card and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my low tack tape now I always have to stand up when I'm doing the low tack tape just going to make sure that the video there we go just move that up a little bit that's better so I always like to make sure that I'm standing up when I add my low tack tape mainly because it's a little bit easier for me Sometimes if I'm not standing up, I can't quite get it on the edge. I don't know what it is, but I sort of have to be looking above it, if that makes sense, because then I can and I, I can apply it to the edges then. And I'm still not doing it now. So I should have had this applied before the video, but I didn't. There you go. I just came up off the cuff and just thought, yes, I think I fancy creating something and I never create a card or a project or a mixed media project or a journal page unless I really feel oops unless I really feel like creating there's no point doing it if you've got to force yourself because then you don't get the enjoyment out of it so I'm just going to put my hand around the phone there we go so hopefully we've got that now it may not stop or it may not stop everything from sipping underneath these edges here but that's not a problem because it just adds to the effect with what we're going to do so it's not too much of a problem anyway so i'm working on my non-stick craft sheet and what i've got is i've got salty ocean and cracked pistachio now what i try to do is if i if i'm struggling to get going i tend to use colours that I'm comfortable with and that I love using. So I think that's the, the thing I could always say to you. If there's a colour scheme that you love, if you're trying to get started again, use colours that you really enjoy using. So I always love using a green and a blue or vintage tones, anything like that. But this time I'm going to use Cracked Pistachio and Salty Ocean. Now, I know that I like the blues and the greens, but more often than not, I'll use something like uh, Twisted Citron and Broken China. So I've just changed it up a little bit and used two different colours. So that was my thinking. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm get, what you should do is grab yourself a little jar with some water in. I didn't even do that. So I've just spritzed some water just on my non-stick craft sheet. And what I'm doing is I'm just adding water to the card. So I'm, I'm going to be working wet on wet. So I'm just applying that moisture just to the card. So I'm literally going to be working wet on wet. And I can tell somebody's been in my room because look how much kitchen roll they've left me. One piece. That's as good as it gets, look. One piece of kitchen roll. Oh, unbelievable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the cracked pistachio. And I'm just going to press that on my non-stick craft sheet and spritz with a touch of water. And then I'm just going to pick that up. And then I'm just going to drop. 
Now, I'm trying to think of something that is easy to do. I've always got this paintbrush that always wants to leave a hair. So what I want you to do is just relax with this and don't think about it as anything too stressful, just as a project that's nice and easy to do. So I didn't have enough colour. And if you haven't got enough water, just spritz your card with a bit more water. So just so that you're working wet on wet and the colour, the colour moves. It doesn't stand still. It actually moves. But I find this an easy technique to do because you don't have to think about it too much. You don't have to get stressed. Because sometimes with some techniques, you worry about whether the colours are laid down properly or whether it's going to work. With this technique, you physically can't go wrong. It's wonderful. I love it when it's something you can't go wrong with. So just spritzing with a bit more water, just to add a bit more movement. So I'm just adding. So now I've got that bit more water, it's moving a little bit more. Now, you're not going to stop it sipping under your tape a little bit, especially when you've got moisture on this card. It's just unavoidable because that's part of it. But I like the fact that you still end up with a border, but it's sort of, it's, it's sort of bled. So it, it, it's, it hasn't got any straight edges if little bits of it bleed under. And as you can see, you don't need much, you don't need much colour. And you also, you're just layering it one on top of the other. So now I can take the cracked pistachio. And you know, when I always do my videos, I always say to you, it's about adding layers of colour. I always say that whether I'm using pens or whatever. So with this, I'm adding layers of that colour. So I'm now going back to the cracked pistachio because as you can see, I added quite a bit of the blue. So I'm coming back with the cracked pistachio. Can you see it's going to seep under here? There's nothing you can do because that's part of the moisture. You can see where it's seeped under, but that adds to the effect to the whole overall look of the card. So just add a little bit more cracked pistachio. It does help if you've got more than one piece of kitchen roll, obviously, but just wipe just so that you don't get too much of that colour because you don't want it to go too much under that tape. You just want a little touch of it if it goes under that tape. You don't want it to be too much. And I'm looking at that. Let me just look in the camera. Yes, it looks quite nice. But what I'm going to do is just add a little bit more of the cracked pistachio because when I look at it, I can see that I went a little bit overboard with the blue and not enough of the green. And the thing is, while when I'm adding it one on top of the other, it gives more definition. So that green is getting a little bit darker and the blue is going underneath the green because these oxide inks are a pigment dye fusion. So therefore, because they're pigment, they've got an opaque element. And because they've got that opaque element, I'm literally adding one colour over the other. And it works beautifully. If you were using the Distress inks, they are translucent. So they would merge into each other rather than on top of each other. So just so that you know the difference. So just soaked my brush just to give it a bit of a clean. Now... What I would say is normally I would say let that dry. Obviously, when you're doing a video and I'm saying, you know, I want you to create a nice quick card, you haven't necessarily got time to wait for it to dry completely. But we have got time to give it a few moments. So we're just going to let that card rest just on one side. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in stamp set five, six, seven worded petals. And I'm going to use a couple of the stamps from here. So I'm going to use this flower stamp, which is slowly or surely becoming another favorite. Isn't it funny? The ones, you, you know, how you always reach for certain ones, but this is becoming a favorite. 
and also this one here this this one here i've started another card with that which looks quite nice so we're going to use that and i did put a piece of card here which i've just put my other one over the top of and i'm just going to use the same smooth card so either the reverse of centura pearl pink frog um Bockingford smooth anything like that uh, Bristol smooth just remember the smoother the card you're going to have to blot your card more because with it being smooth and it's got a really slick surface if it's got a really slick smooth surface you need to blot it and dry it because it will stay wetter longer so I'm just going to stamp that like so and just allow the ink to rest on your card just to give it plenty of time to soak in now what i want to do is i want a small brush and what i want to do is i want to give some contrast to the blue and the green so what i'm thinking is we can have a flower that's in a bit of orange and red so i'm going to use my ripe persimmon and my candied apple distress oxide inks it doesn't matter if you use the distress inks other than the fact that one is translucent and one has got an opaque element that's the difference so what i'm going to do is pick up i'm now using a fine paintbrush i'm not using one that's too thick so i'm going to just add a little bit of moisture inside this flower again working wet on wet so I'm just going to apply a little bit of moisture just around that flower, like so. So that's wet on wet. I'm going to keep the stem in the white colour. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ripe persimmon and I'm going to press that on my non-stick craft sheet. And I'm going to spritz half of it Heart, let me just make sure we've got that in the thingy. Have I got that? Yes. So I'm going to spritz half the colour with water and half is not spritzed with water because my brush is wet. So I'm going to pick up the wet and I'm just going to dab that. Again, have you noticed I'm not doing anything different than I did with the background on the card? Nothing different at all. So I'm picking up the ripe persimmon and I'm dabbing. I'm dabbing that in. So doing nothing any different. And if I want it slightly richer, I go into the bit of the colour that I haven't spritzed with water because that's a bit more richer in colour because it's not been spritzed with water. So just pick that up and just drop it. So what I want to show you is, let me just get the cat right, Prasiman. So if I spritz this with water, this half, this is diluted so if I pick that up it's more diluted and I can just dab it on my card but then if I pick up this side it's richer in colour because it's not been diluted as much therefore I can just dab in a little bit more of that darker colour just on the edges so pick up that richer colour there that hasn't been diluted and add it and because you're using wet on wet, it starts to bleed. So it'll start to bleed for you. Like so. And it's a nice easy way just to add a bit of colour. Doesn't matter that it goes outside. If you stamp direct onto the card, the flower, it looks quite good when a bit of it bleeds outside the flower. It looks like an, an effect. So it looks quite good. Go. Okay, so it just bleeds out. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to end up with not enough kitchen roll here. What I'm going to do then is go to the candied apple. But this time I'm not going to spritz this with water i've got water on my brush i can put a bit of water on one side and make sure that my brush is wet okay so my brush is wet and then i'm going to pick up that concentrated color and i'm going to dab it 
into the edges. So I'm just picking up that concentrated colour and just picking up the so that it goes on the edges. Let's just I will pick this up just so that you can have a look. Can you see I've now got the darker colour wet on wet? So you can pick a bit of water up and then just dilute the colour out so it looks a little bit more blended. Just so you can see that. But it looks lovely also with this colour bleeding on the outside. If you just add that on a card and a sentiment, it'll look beautiful. But we're going to cut it out. But you can see it looks blended. So you can go back again and even add a little bit more, a little bit more of the red colour. So you're adding layers of that colour. You can, you can add a little bit more dimension. And what I would always say is that it's very important that when, you, when you're, you're playing with moisture and you're adding moisture to your card, it's important that you just let that rest. But it looks blended, beautiful. But it's important that you let that card rest. So don't be in too much of a rush. We'll just leave that there for the moment and we'll just do a little bit more stamping because we can cut these out afterwards. Now on the same stamp set, the worded petals, is this leaf one. I absolutely love this. So we're going to stamp that as well. So just ink that with your black Nocturne ink, just onto scrap card. Just stamp that onto scrap card. We go and what we're going to do is going to apply the same rule as we've done with the flower so we'll spritz that with the orange with a bit of water spritz a bit of plain water i'm working with three different things here my brush is covered in the red so let's just wipe that red off and go back again so always try and work with a clean brush and then go back do you know i've gone too far Let's just get rid of this. What I want you to do is pick up the water and you've got to add the water to your leaf. So just add the water. Mine's a little bit coloured. Work with a clean brush if you can. It doesn't matter too much because I'm using these colours anyway. But if you were doing other techniques, you need to make sure that your, your brush is clean. So what I'm doing is I'm mainly adding moisture to this leaf just adding a bit of moisture and then what I'm going to do is go to the right persimmon with the water and just dab in some of that colour just dab it in and when you've got lots of time which you have because hopefully Maybe you're sitting at home and you're doing it when you're relaxing. It means that you can allow that card to rest. You can give it time to rest. Because this is all about taking your time. But again, don't worry if it bleeds outside. It's not a problem. Not a problem at all. So what you're going to do then is go to the red just have a little bit more water go to the red and then we can dab a little bit of that red in can't see that as much so let's just dab a little bit more red that's better that's better and it's a lovely way to colour without stressing about things too much. And just pick up a bit of that red for this bit here. But you don't have to stress about it because you can just do it a little bit at a time and you're just adding a little bit of colour 
and you're adding it in a random way so it, it's it's not too detrimental so you're just adding your colors in a random way just allow that to rest a little bit which else was i going to use it was that and that oh yes I had to think then so what i'm going to do is just wipe all this up so we don't get in any mess there we go and it's if you can just allow each piece of card to rest each time now as you can see you can see where this is bled can you see if i pull that back you can see where that's bled but that's going to add to the technique but i'm going to have to dry this a little bit and the reason we're going to have to dry this is because we're doing the video there isn't enough time to let it dry any longer but you can let it dry overnight if you wish but now you've let it dry a little bit it's done what it needs to do it's reacted So I'm now going to give that a dry. Just give it a thorough dry. And obviously the tape will lift because it's, that's just natural. There we go. Now we're going to leave the tape just in place for the minute, just for a moment just going to grab an ink blending tool and then what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the cracked pistachio and what I'm going to do is grab where's that low tack tape take that low tack tape and I'm going to just put a little piece across there just across towards you know sort of about an inch above the, the bottom I'll just fold that over I don't like losing the edges so I've just put a piece of tape here so it's just about that much from the lower edge so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cracked pistachio and I'm going to make sure that I prime my blending tool with ink in other words make sure there's plenty of ink on there and then what I'm going to do is start off here and just blend the colour around the edges so I'm just blending that around the edges and just around the edges of this as well of this sentiment of this strip so this strip here I'm just blending so take the cracked pistachio start off the tape and then come in I'm just taking my time just blend some there as well and I'm going to use my left hand if I can just so that I don't have to move the paper just so that you can see what I'm doing because then I'm not I'm not moving it round in all different directions So what I've done is I've blended it along those edges and along these. But I start off the tape each time. I don't go straight onto the card. I start off the tape. There we go. That's how I cracked pistachio. Let's put that away. And what I'm going to do is put that leaf back just so that we don't get in a mess just place that back then i'm going to use my text stamp which i absolutely adore and use this text stamp 
little A7 acrylic block. Let's make sure we've got it the right way, which I often don't have it the right way. And what we're going to do is we're going to use Versafine Claire Morning Mist Grey Ink. So whatever grey ink you've got, I love the morning mist, but whichever grey ink you've got. And I'm just going to add some stamping to my background. Just to add going down the card. So again, using the morning mist and just stamping it down the card. Like so. So just take your time. There we go. And continue doing that. Make sure you've got a good layer of ink because that card will still be slightly moist. There we go. Going to put some at the top just to make it a little bit different. Just have a little bit at the top. That's it. So then we can can we remove our tape? That yes, we can remove our tape now. And you always get it in the wrong order. So remove the tape. Now don't I mean this is really good low tack tape. But when you've used moisture, you know, just be careful. So pull it away from the card, like so. So we'll just put that in there and then it's out of the way. And I can't remember which one I applied first. Was it this piece? Nobody knows. I never get them off in the right order, to be honest. Just go gently with that with that low tack tape. Just go gently. There we go. There we go. Take your time. And if you dry your card with your heat tool, it, the, the low tack tape should come off a lot easier as well. There we go. So what we've got, rather than the complete white border, is we've got some white border, but we've got these areas around the edge so that it looks like it's sort of seeped out but in a, a gentle way and we've still got like random edges and this here gives me an opening for a sentiment so perfect so what i'm going to do now is am i going to cut the pieces out or am i going to but do you know i hope you talk to yourself because i spend so much time talking to myself so what i've got now is i've got a circle that's two and a quarter inches that I'm going to add here, like so. I think, I only think, you don't, don't quote me on that yet. So we'll see how it goes. So with that little circle, I'm using the grey Versafine Claire ink and I'm going to add a little bit of stamping randomly to the circle. Let's do it that way for a change. So there we go. We've got some second generation stamping as well. That's better. I like that. Let me show you what we've done. So we've got the first generation going this way and the second generation going the other way. Just to make it a little bit more interesting. 
Right, what we're going to do now is we're going to cut out our florally bits. But what we're going to do is we're going to need to dry them. And we're just drying them so that, again, it's a little bit easier to cut out and work with so that you don't tear the paper. And then we can cut these pieces out. And I'm not going to leave a white border, mainly because if you remember, because of the way we've coloured, because we haven't gone delicate, if we wanted to leave a white edge, we'd have to go more delicate with the watercolours of the Distress Oxides. So I'm going to cut out the flower edge to edge. Just cut this out. So now you can see why it doesn't matter that it's seeped out around the edge. It doesn't matter one bit. It's funny, I bought a new pair of scissors. I've always got loads of pairs of these scissors, but because I haven't used these like I've used the others a hundred times, these are quite stiff. So I just need to wear them in a bit. No time like the present on a live video. Just cut that out. But you do have to be careful that your card is dry. Because also, if you try to cut out card that's moist, it, it, it's, like, it's like a battle. Because all you're doing is shredding those fibres. So you, it is easier if you make sure that your card is totally dry. More fingers and thumbs. There we go. Now cutting out the leaf is going to be a little bit, a little bit longer. So I'll just use a pair of scissors that are not quite so stiff with them being new. Ow. Just stabbed myself with a pair of scissors. Let me just use, that's it, just a little bit looser because I've, I've used these a little bit more. I need to use these, the others. A few more times. So obviously, if you want to fast forward me, now is the time, because I'm just going to be cutting this leaf out. So that's entirely up to you. So I hope you've had something nice for Christmas. I wonder if any of you have had any craft goodies for Christmas. I treated myself to some pencils. Not that I need an excuse. You know, any time is a good time for a treat. In my eyes. But I do keep using that excuse quite frequently. And I do keep pulling the um, card to my chest because I'm so used to cutting out close to me rather than away. So if you see me pull the image away from camera, it's because I'm so used to cutting it closer to my body. So just cut that out. There we go. See, I don't mind cutting out at all. I find it quite therapeutic. And always remember to turn your card rather than your scissors turn your card and it makes it easier for you 
when you're cutting out. But I do think that leaf is worthwhile cutting out. There we go. So these are the bits that we've got so far. This is what we're working with so far. So what I want to do is just, just going to have a look at my sentiments. Of course, the sentiment stamp was always the last one, isn't it? And I just think I'm going to put the word dream. Because I don't need to overpower it with anything else really so the word dream is absolutely fine so just get rid of that text stamp and take the word dream but I just want to make sure that where I'm going to put that circle so you see that flowers going like this like that yep so let's just lay that down because there's another element I want to add. So just adhere the circle. Like so. Because you've obviously got moisture in that card, you just need to give it a few seconds for the adhesive to grab. Now I can stamp the sentiment in black. So I can stamp the dream in Nocturne. And add the dream. You don't need to press too hard because it's not a thick scent. It's not, you know, the wording's not too thick and it's not too detailed. So you don't need to press too hard. So that's from Bring On My Bring On the Sentiments. Move that out of the way so we've got some space. So this is just what you can see at the moment. Then what I'm going to do is where are we? I think I've lost one of my 3D foams. I don't want to faff with one that's... Oh, that's okay, this one's okay. I thought I was going to have to faff. So I've got some 3D foam. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some black cotton. Quite a bit of black cotton. And just spread it. Just spread it so that you can see some outside the circle, like so. Then we're going to take our flower. We're just going to get some 3D foam. Just make sure that's not too big. Yeah, that's fine. So we just add that there and the 3D foam and the adhesive will capture the cotton. And then I'm going to take the leaf like so, which is very fine. So I'm not going to put any 3D foam on that because it's a very fine image and you'll be waiting all week for me to apl apply 3D foam to that and I'll drive you mad. Just, just leave little bits of it sticking up. So leave some of the leaves sticking up like this. Just so that it gives it more life. Don't try to press everything down. Obviously you want the base bit to adhere. Let's see. So you just need to hold it in place. There we go. Just so that you've got this you see i love creating i absolutely love creating i just think it's so therapeutic 
Right, what we're going to do now is we're going to just add some shading. Now I'm using my ink tense pencil, my grey ink tense pencil. You can use your pastel pencils, you can use your distress oxides, whatever you wish, just to highlight this circle. I'm going to stick that down a bit more. I think with the texture of the cotton, we perhaps haven't got enough adhesive on there, have we? Oh, we have, it's just the bottom. Let's adhere that bottom. That doesn't sound very good, does it? Let's adhere that bottom. Just hold that bottom down. So just take your time holding that down. There we go. So where's my water brush? Have we got it in here? Do you know, I've got that many things out on the desk. I still haven't tidied up, which is just awful. There it is. Can't see it for staring. Right. Let's just blend out that ink tense pencil. Just blend that out. Put that cotton back. I like how it was before. So just moving my card just so I can blend the ink tense pencil just around the circle just so it stands out a little bit more the kitchen rolls even looking nice which you could use in a project which would be lovely so what I'm going to do then is I want to add a little character so what we'll do first is we'll add this to our black mat because that will let it stand out a little bit more let's just I always say I'm going to make a really quick card who am I kidding I never do super quick cards do I they always seem to take a while but I think they're worth it if they take a little bit more time I do think they're worth it. Just pressing that down just to make sure because that card is fighting against me adhering because it's got that moisture in. So I'm just making sure. Can you see how it looks on the black mat? Which is a quarter of an inch bigger than the four and a half by six and a half inch piece of white card. Then we're going to add to a five inch by seven inch white card blank. Just add that to a five inch by seven inch white card blank. And I think when it's added to the card blanks, it looks so much more professional. Just a couple more things to do, just so you can see it so far. So happy with that. Right. And with the heat of your fingers, you know, it. You, you just need to make sure that that is adhered, that it doesn't pop back up again. Right. What we want now, what I want to do now, is I want to add this little character here. So, do I add the one? Think, think. I'm sorry, but I have to think a little bit. I know it's dangerous, isn't it? Really. Let's pull the stamp out. So this is my up, up and away. So, do I want the little rabbit or do I want the little fox? See, I like the little fox. Not that I'm very particular at all. So what I tend to do is, I tend to judge where the little fox is going. Could go on the flowers there, but it might just be a little bit high for me. So I think I'm going to put him there, like so. So just to stamp his little legs, we may not get a perfect impression, but we're going to cut him out anyway. So, but I just want to stamp his little legs so that I'm not stamping the legs. Let's just have him down here. Like so. 
just so I've got his little legs. and just cut the bare minimums out then there we go so i've got his little legs i've got his little legs on there so now i'm going to stamp him onto a piece of white card i haven't got a spare piece of white card so let's just tear one so we're going to stamp him in black like so And now I don't have to cut his legs out, you see, because we've got his legs there, so that's perfect for me. And I love these little characters, just so I can add a little bit more detail to my project. I love adding little touches. Just brings a little bit more interest. And it's great with these little characters because you can tuck them into places as well. So you can tuck them into areas in your project and it brings a little bit more interest, but doesn't overpower everything. So move that out of the way. So much for tidying my craft room because I've just literally just chucked that on the floor. So no harm comes to the fox because we put his legs back again, so it's not a problem. But we don't need his legs this time, you see. There we go. So no harm has come to him, really. And what I'm going to do, did I keep that fine brush out? What I'm going to do is just take a little bit of this Distress Oxide Ripe Persimmon and a little bit of the Candied Apple. Don't need much. I think there, there might be a little bit of moisture, but not much. You need to add a little bit of moisture not much and just colour leave a little bit of a white area on the scarf and then a little bit of that red take the excess off and just blend it out but just leave a little bit of white area Just so you can see, he's got a little bit of his scarf. So then we can add him, we can add a little bit of 3D foam to him, I think. So let's add a little bit of 3D foam to him. Just to raise him up a little bit, a little bit of adhesive. Go. Let's pop him on there. I like how he pops in white. Make sure you get him lined up properly, which sometimes is the hardest bit. Down a bit, Tracy. There we go. Put down a bit there. That's better. So we've got his little scarf. Look, doesn't he look good? So we've got a little bit of grey on here. So maybe add a little bit of shading just underneath. Let me see if I can show you that. Just a little bit of shading underneath. Of course we can. Right, then we want to add some white splatters. But just not too many. Perfect. And then hopefully I can use some gems. You can tell I've not even opened this. Oh, there you go. I've got this pen for picking up my, I don't know why I've got it in this case. Don't need it in that case. So it should have a sticky end. Is this, she's got the sticky end. Can you tell I've never used this before? Or is that? The sticky end oh um, yeah sorry i'm unscrewing it so let me get my um sequins so we've got oranges and blues and reds 
so which has got oranges and blues and reds so that's got some reds that's pinks that's not it let's have this so i've got some sequins here as you can see so let's have a look oh please don't tell me they've got plastic on them there we go so we've got some sequins here so let's see if this picks it up let's see if this picks the sequins up i don't know whether that's one sequin oh it does sorry i'm like a child oh it does help to add some adhesive when you're adding a, a sequin doesn't it what a trip so let's just put one there oh yes we can do this so what what colors are in this one oh there's some red in here so you can pick it out the pot tracy where do i want the other one let's add one here like so and let's add these little oh i'm liking this pickup thing this pickup thing's fun Makes it so much easier for picking up sequins. So we've got three little sequins just on there. Just so that you can see those. I do like the little sequins. Let's add a couple more. Really tiny sequins now. And they've got to be added in an odd number. I've not put much DC down there. So that's an odd number. We've got a little sequin here. It's perfect. So where am I going to put that one down here? Do you like I'm talking to myself about sequins? Just get them on the page, Tracy. There we go. Put that one back just so that you can see the sequins. The adhesive will dry clear, so it's not too bad. But just so that you can see those sequins. It's just, they look nice with the bits of sequins and the little, little man. I just think that looks lovely. Now I don't know which one belonged to which one, but there you go. So you probably see me use a few sequins, a few more sequins. Oh, I've got a white splatter on my card there. So just so you can see that, I just think in camera, this here is a nice white splatter. As you can see, it's, well, I think it looks lovely in camera. I really do think it looks lovely in camera. And I don't want to add any intense pencil around here because we've got this bleeding out. And I think that looks lovely. And I love how the fox looks. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope it'll get you creating again. Just to enjoy the process and get you going again. Uh, and maybe you'll do some in a couple of different colour schemes. So I look forward to seeing your, your take on the inspiration. And I look forward to seeing you all soon. Bye for now. Bye everyone.